taking the shaft out of the bottom of the boat. So we've got a three blade classic Max prop. Let's whack this bad boy together. Oh, your camera in your face. How many to bloody do a job around here? The captain has just inherited the project. We are an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Welcome back to Rocky Point in Mexico, where we are currently holed out on the hard stand. So Lee is about to prime and Andy Powell just a little section because we're going to put the prop back on and the shaft back in. We don't want to leave the prop uh, and the drive shaft out here. It can misplaced or damaged, so we'll eliminate all that. And just where the um, shaft goes into the hull, there's a bit of a void there and we just want to avoid the growth, so we're going to Paint that, put a bit of barrier coat on first and then um, put some anti-foul on it and put our shaft back together. Amazing! Total boat. The guys are legends. Thank you for providing our epoxy barrier coat and our anti-foul. We will get to put it on some stage. Yeah, we <laughs> Not will. Just We're just got a little bit of blister work first and then uh, that's what we'll be using the barrier coat, the total boat barrier coat for anyway. So. Worked out perfect. So There's a lovely breeze today, so it's not too hot. Lots going on. Taylor's boat's been moved. There's a mast behind us. There's things happening now, so a lot of people are coming back to their boats. It's getting to the end of September, so people are like getting ready to get back put in, back not, in the water. Not everyone was here through the heat, you know. A lot of these Americans seem a little bit soft, I think. They couldn't <laughs> handle the heat, but you know, we come from Asia in the tropics, so it wasn't too soft bad. Soft or smart, either one. You, you do decide. And, so the boat yard is busy, a lot of fishing boats getting pulled out and uh, redoing the bottoms. They seem to be way quicker than us. Yeah, we're just using a little bit of barrier coat here. But there is a 15 minute induction period here, so just going to let that sit and I'm going to go and wipe over the area, make sure it's clean and uh, away we go. taking the shaft out of the bottom of the boat which the prop is on and so I've got a wet sander we've just painted the section with the anti towel because once we put it in we won't be able to do when it's back in so what do you got six or so bad bit forward I want that nice because that's in the boat and that's where our seal sits on yeah. that's just all just going to be clean okay. um, and then that back Whenever I'm doing something that I don't really want to do and working on the boat, I just think of all the nice places we've been and that we'll be able to do that sooner once the boat is finished. So I sanded the shaft, Dad and I put it back on, and I don't know what else we're doing today. It's like such a slow day. You know what you're doing now? I'll start it up. So we've got a three blade classic Max prop, and it's been poorly looked after. It's had its anodes, disappear and uh, not be replaced so there's a fair bit of electrolysis on there as you can see polish them up but the side effect of not having the anodes on they've really eaten into the propeller we've pulled the shaft we've replaced the cutlass bearing we've cleaned all the propeller up we've degreased it we've soaked it in vinegar and then I've wire brushed it uh, we are going to put some prop speed on. So assembling this, I'm going to do a little bit different because we're in Puerto Penasco. It's extremely hot here. Generally, you would pack this with grease as you assemble it. 
I'm not going to. So the housing actually has holes here where we can put our grease nipple in and pump it full of grease. But I'm going to do that when we're just about ready to go back in the water because it's so hot. Uh, I've looked at other max props on other boats and all the grease is dripping out of them. So if I go and grease it up now and then whenever we get our prop speed, I try and do that, we're going to have a greasy surface to work with. So I'm not going to do that. That's about it. It's pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy, like I said. They're between 20 and 30, 10 and 30 degrees, the adjustment. They obviously uh, last many years, even with neglect. Let's whack this bad boy together. Just going to put my keyway in. First little par. You can see this a fair bit of electrolysis on here. Like I said, I've still got it. There's electrolysis over here too. I've got to check the grounding system, blah, blah. Long stuff. Straightforward. For some. <laughs> right. In YouTube for seven years, Lee is still embarrassed when someone walks past. <laughs> when we're filming, he just clams up. <laughs> or he talks very quietly. This is Lee. When there's someone walking past. Hi guys, welcome back to Sailing Catalpa. Can you hear me? No. PYI is the company which we got our service kit from, which supplied us with grease, grease guns, anodes, new bolts, bits and pieces, whatever you need to get these ones serviced. And even if you don't want to do it yourself, you can send it to them and they'll service it for you. So we're going to run with E and H. So for starters, on the X here, we're going to line up the E and then the, followed by the H up on the top. So let's let's get this going. Get our two pins in. So we said E. So on here, you can see there's our locator. We're going to line that up with E. So that sets our So E sets our pitch at 18 degrees. I've actually put two marks on here. So when I pulled it apart, because I wasn't sure how it was going to come apart, there's my two alignments there that I done with the punch. So now if you come back, you can see that it is on H. Up at the top there, and it's on H. So it's on the H. You're so organizing me, honey. I was trying to work, I've forgotten where all these bolts We're go. We're two peas in a pod, you and I. Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> so like I said, generally you'd grease all this up before you put this together. I'm not going to. It's so hot here. Um, we have holes here, which is for the grease nipple. So just before we go back into the water, I'm going to grease this up and I'll pump it, rotate it, pump it, rotate it, get as much grease as I can in there. So if I do it now, it's just going to fall out with the heat. We don't want that. So this is the way I'm doing it, right or wrong. That's how, that's how it's going. Two. Three. <laughs> bit of teff gel on a bit of everything. <laughs> Bloody camera in your face. How many to bloody do a job around here? <laughs> One person working, three people watching. Yeah. <laughs> and just like that, the prop was serviced and back together. Next job was to fill the holes. We have let the hull dry out for nearly eight weeks and figured it was ready to start patching the grinded out areas. First, we washed the hole with fresh water and then wiped the area with acetone. We painted on an epoxy resin in each hole and we used the thickened epoxy to fill the holes. After we filled the next day, it was sanded smooth. This process took us a few days to finish because we all got sick, it took us a few days to recover. Which stopped us after the first day, then we ran out of silica and epoxy twice it usually isn't a problem but you can't buy this here in mexico luckily for us we had a friend bring some epoxy that we ordered to phoenix down to mexico but all these things slow you down so that's something to consider when you're looking where to haul out your boat if you have lots of projects Not 
that many. There it is down here. We've got friends, honey. <laughs> oh, I really love you. Hi, dear. Hi, dear. Something for the spare of bricks. And stoke. Look how big it is. Where is it going? These guys on the cat over here. There's legends off this boat. There's a big whale on the side. I think it's SV Cora. SV Cora, yeah. Had a few problems. I had intermittent problems with this, it sort of works and then doesn't work. So it's a 9 kVA generator which we're going to try and get going. Now we don't have a generator and um, these guys have said if we can get it going, they'd like to uh, donate that to us. So we'll get it going. It's like got a thousand hours on it and um, 9 kVA, we may even be able to treat ourselves to an aircon night, I don't know, movie night now and then. While we were here, we also decided it would be a good decision to get our chain regalvanized. It was pretty cheap to do it in Mexicali, and our friend dropped it off on his way to San Diego. So we've been moved today. We had to get moved out of the way because uh, there was some boats getting shuffled around the yard. Anyway, we are over, still on the same, kind of the same spot. We were over here before, and now we're over here. Not really that much difference, we haven't really moved that far, but we are on the skateboard travel lifty thingy. So that's why we're on that, because we got moved around. Anyway, what's the captain up to? Well, the captain has just inherited a project. 9 kVA generator. I heard through the grapevine that their generator that they've just installed, that's probably a week old, is not running and having the same problems as they had with this generator. So what they were having, what they found out, is that they've got some sort of fuel blockage or collapsed fuel line on their boat. Therefore, I'm assuming at this stage, it's the exact same problem that they've had with this. So no mechanic could fix it. The problem is, I don't think there is a problem. So it's a little bit rough. When they did the install on it, they've just gone and cut all the wires and it's, uh, yeah. As you can see, I just got to get some schematics, maybe even get in contact with Brian, my electrical engineer friend that helped me with the Victron gear. I'm pretty much going to just bench test this. I don't think I really need to fix it. I think it was just a fuel issue. So, fingers crossed, we'll see how we go. Otherwise, I'll hand it on to someone else for a carton of beer and they can deal with it. So, we might as well reinstall it. It's got a thousand hours on there, which is absolutely nothing for this little thing. If all goes well, we'll install it. 9 kVA generator for two cartons of beer can't go wrong. Thanks Nick and Jasmine. Hey. And we know this was a headache for you, but we're hoping it's going to be great for us. Lee's been out here getting, sanding some of the things where the stands were this morning. Really early days. I haven't touched it yet. I'm just sort of seeing what's, what's what. The fuel pump here, our water pump here, which doesn't have an impeller in it. So I'll clean all that up, I'll put a new impeller in, I'll sit a bucket of water up there, put a battery up there. We've also got a, uh, I'm not 100% sure, it's a massive heavy box that goes with it, so it drops, puts three phase down to one phase. Only problem with this one is 240 volts and our boat is 110. So we're going to get a Victron converter and that will change it from 240 or 230, whatever it is down to 110 emergency power. Biggest thing for us was actually hoping to get a dive compressor at some stage and this little baby will run an electric dive presser, a uh, dive compressor. Thank you, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Underneath blue overalls is a broken man. Too much boat work. Fun me. Not enough fun. Sweaty shirt. 
Who the <laughs> right mind would sign up for a boat? Especially one that's been sitting for eight years in a marina neglected. We do. Learn the hard way. Do you think we'd know? Do you think we'd know? We'd probably do it again, wouldn't we? <laughs> no. No, we would not. <laughs> Uh, we go to this much effort, I think we just build a boat next. <laughs> Ready to go have fun. Yep. Our favourite afternoon ritual or nighttime ritual involves a sunset and our rest mud water. It's our favourite way to wind down after a hard day's work on the hard stand. Ingredients that make you feel good and help you sleep. It has rooibos tea in there and ginger and cardamom, black pepper, nutmeg and cloves, medicinal mushrooms, chamomile and all the things that make you feel all nice and calm so that you can have a lovely a good night's sleep. So we're going to head down the beach now chill out for the afternoon because bow work is done for the day these videos are made possible by our patrons thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you next time